as we've mentioned, there are many different ways you can do NMR as long as you have some compound with an odd mass number or atomic number. But the two you're most likely to see are going to be carbon-13 NMR and proton NMR. And of those two, on the MCAT, the one that you'll be most likely to have to interpret is going to be proton NMR. An understanding of proton NMR really requires an understanding of what it means to have an enantiotropic or chemically equivalent proton. And essentially what that means is that they're in a very, very similar proton environment. And because of that, they're going to have very similar qualities in terms of how strong the magnetic field needs to be in order for the laser to flip them from one spin to the other. So essentially, if two protons are considered chemically equivalent or enantiotropic, essentially that means that they will behave very similarly and they will show up in the same group on NMR because they are at chemically equivalent positions that allow them to behave very, very similarly when they're in the same magnetic field and with the same type of laser being shot through them. And in order for them to become considered chemically equivalent, they need to meet certain requirements based on the type of atom they're bound to, the other protons in their environment, and what their neighbors look like. And so the first requirement is that for protons to be equivalent, they must be attached to the same central atom. And by that, we mean that if this proton is attached to oxygen and these ones are attached to carbon, these protons will not be chemically equivalent to those because there are significant electronegativity differences between an OH bond and a CH bond. So they need to be attached to the same type of central atom. This central atom has to have the same number of protons attached to it. And so the CH3 here has three protons attached to that carbon, whereas the CH2 here has only two uh, hydrogens attached to that carbon. And so these will not be considered chemically equivalent because one of these protons is part of a central atom that only has two hydrogens attached whereas any of these protons are attached to a carbon that has three hydrogens on it. So it needs to be attached to the same type of central atom, and that central atom needs to have the same number of protons attached to it, protons or hydrogens, we can use either term. And the third condition is that they need to meet the first two and they need to have neighbors that are identical. They need to have neighbors that are the same type of atom and they need to have those neighbors have the exact same number of protons attached to them. And so let's just go through an example here. Right now we have this CH2, which is attached to two carbons, and the carbons it's attached to have a total of five hydrogens attached to them. Whereas if we look here, these could be considered chemically equivalent according to the first two criteria. This is a CH2, so a proton that's attached to a carbon that has two hydrogens on it. Whereas one here is also a proton that's attached to a carbon that has two hydrogens on it. But these two fail the test of having the exact same type of neighbors and the exact same number of neighboring protons. So here, this one has two carbon neighbors attached to that central carbon, but the carbon neighbors have a total of three plus two, so there are five neighboring hydrogens. Whereas, let's say we're looking down here, yes, it's a hydrogen attached to a carbon that has two. Yes, the neighbors are carbon and carbon, but the neighboring carbons have two four, so they have a different number of neighboring hydrogens on the neighbors of that central carbon. And so once you understand those three conditions, then you can go through a compound and look at the types of environments where you can consider those protons to be chemically equivalent or enantiotropic. And this is very, very important then when you're analyzing an NMR plot. So let's go through this compound. It has one, two, three, four, five, six carbons, 
and it has an OH group at the end. Six carbons means hex an is going to be the first part of the name. And OH means that it's an alcohol, and so it will end in all. And so this is hexanol, or you could say one hexanol, because the alcohol group is attached to carbon number one, rather than something in the middle of this carbon chain. So here we have one hexanol, and let's go through and look at the number of unique proton environments that will then enable us to understand the NMR plot that this will produce. So first, let's look for things that are attached to the same central atom. That already rules out this proton here from being chemically equivalent to anything else because this hydrogen is attached to oxygen and none of, its, uh, none of the other hydrogens in this environment are. So this one will occupy its own proton environment. The next thing we're looking for are ones that are attached to the same type of central atom, which is all of the remaining hydrogens. But we need them to be attached to the central atom that has the exact same number of protons. And so this, these three are attached to a carbon containing three hydrogens. That's different from everything else here, which are hydrogens attached to a carbon with only two. And so here we have a unique hydrogen environment there. The rest of these CH groups satisfy the first two terms. So perhaps all of these could be considered enantiotropic or chemically equivalent protons because they exist in identical environments. However, what we need to find is one with the same types of neighbors and those neighbors to have the same numbers of hydrogens attached. And so here we can clearly see that this CH2 group has a neighbor that is an oxygen and a neighbor that is a CH2. That's the only CH2 group in here that has an oxygen neighbor. So here we've established a third proton environment. It's hydrogens that are attached to a carbon or a CH2. They're part of a CH2. But their neighbors are one CH2 and one oxygen. And so that is its own distinct environment. And let's look at the rest of these. These are all CH2s. And let's sort of examine the neighbors in order to figure this out. So here is a CH2 with two, four hydrogens on their neighboring atoms. This CH2 group has two and another two on its neighbors. And so that's another chemically equivalent one. So this CH2 group, which has four neighbors, and this CH2 group, which has four neighbors, these are equivalent proton environments. How about this one? CH2 with neighboring carbons that have two and two. So once again, you have a CH2 group with four neighboring protons. How about this one? It's a CH2 group, and it has two on this neighbor, but it has three on that neighbor. And so that means the total number of neighboring protons for this CH2 group is going to be five neighboring protons, which is different from the four. And so here, these three are all groups that have CH2s with four protons combined between their two neighboring carbons. This one has five neighboring protons, three there and two there. So that will be its own environment. And so what we have here in this one hexanol compound is we have one, two, three, four, five distinct hydrogen environments or proton environments. And then we'll start to look at how to analyze an NMR plot and what these things mean, what the neighboring numbers mean, what the number of protons in that environment means. Because look at this, this environment has three. This environment has two protons. This environment has two, four, six protons. This one only has two, and this has one. So the relevant points that we're looking at here are we are looking at the number of distinct environments that we have. Here it's one, two, three, four, five. Five distinct environments will mean five different 
groups of peaks on your NMR plot. The next thing we're looking at is how many protons exist in that environment. So we have three in this environment and we have six there. And as we'll discuss in a moment, the number of protons in that environment tells you the area underneath those peaks representing those protons. This will have twice the area under its peaks as this one will. And then the third thing that we look at is the number of neighbors because the number of neighbors gives us a clue as to how many sub peaks you get within that one environment. So we will continue to use this one hexanol in order to understand how NMR plots work and the rules for very simply and strategically go breaking down an NMR plot to interpret exactly what proton environments are available. Mm -hmm.